Hi guys, this is Coach Tony Morgan again, and today's video is on a Worcester 280 RSF. Now this is an old boiler, um, and some of the parts are actually obsolete on it. But I'm going to still tell you about it because you can get some parts and you can repair it in some areas. So I'll give you a bit of insight into that. So we're going to have a quick tour around the boiler, look at the parts, how it flows, common faults, etc. You can see the case is removed. It just lifts off basically the front cover. And then to get access into the boiler, we've already removed the screws, but you remove one from here and one from here and then this front panel the grey panel here that slides towards us and then it hooks on like a little kind of um, track which is here as you can see the front panel cover is removed I pulled it forward along this track as I said before and it hangs on here that little bracket there that's how it hangs so it gives you access inside the boiler much further so you can see the pump and you can see the diverter valve. So we're just going to go through the parts in the boiler. So in this bottom section you can see like this, this is a hot water sensor and a gas valve. Now this gas valve is potentially obsolete now but you can get some bits for it. You can get a solenoid, they go quite often. This is a pilot solenoid, so if that goes, you're not going to get no ignition, it'll just start ticking and not actually light. So that's for the pilot solenoid. <coughs> then you've got this is the modureg, and this is the main gas valve actuator here, so they can fail as well. But you can get these parts. Then we're going to look at the, this white thing here. This is the hot water heat exchanger. Bit of a strange shape. Well, that's what it is. And just standard stuff like the PRV. Now this diverter valve is a quite a strange thing. We're looking at it from the front elevation, but from the side, which is difficult to show you on this picture. I'll just get in close of you. So the best thing I can show you on this diverter valve, you can see that black lever. So that'll move depending what mode it's in. You can see it closely. It's got, it says A and B. So you'll see that mode over when it's in, depending which mode it's in. So that's your diverter valve anyway. And obviously you can see the expansion vessel. This is the old re thermostat, so that'll trip if the main heat exchange gets too hot. So if like if the pump fails or it's not enough water in the system or if the burner pressures are incorrect, this will trip and obviously you'll have to press it down to reset it. But if it does, as I said, you'll have to look into what them things are. Pump, burner pressure, lack of water. What I also forgot to mention here, this is the hot water flow switch. So when the water taps opened, it moves a paddle inside, makes a switch and that goes to the PCB and starts a hot water sequence. What's also strange about this boiler, it's quite unique, you can see this pipe work, this pipe here, and basically that grey background is like internal pipe work which runs between here and the top of the boiler, so it's got like an internal pipe system inside that there which runs right the back of the boiler basically into the main heat exchanger so it's a quite unique system so that's why the pipes are going that way so as i was saying about the pipe work you can see this pipe coming from that like internal pipe system from there it comes out of there like this so it's quite unique. Anyway, the burner assembly is quite standard. It's an aerate burner, a standard efficiency boiler. And I mentioned this before, another boiler which is standard efficiency. Basically, the, the flame, the fumes go up here, perhaps combustion, through the main heat exchanger being sucked out through the fan, then out through the flue. 
so it's pretty standard and how these operate this particular bar it's got a pilot light which is lit that part light is only lit when ignition is going to start so it's not a permanent pilot it's only there once the air pressure switch is made once the fans turn etc the gas valve will open you've got this tube here which is that's a pilot via that solenoid what I said before that solenoid activates lets the gas out up the pipe to the pilot burner that then lights once that part's established, then you get flame rectification, goes down that lead, back into the board, the board detects that then it will then energize the main gas valve on the gas valve. So that's the gas valve solenoid, sorry. That'll be energized and then that'll let gas through through that pipe into here and then burn. So that'll be the main burner which will be on. So on this board you can get a couple of faults on the ignition side of things. So I said earlier that the pilot solenoid if that fails, then no gas will come up here. The spark electrode in here will just be ticking. That basically send out a spark waiting to light the pilot's pilot. So because there's no gas, it'll just be tick, 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 continuous on this boiler so if you hear that that means this solenoid has not activated so the other thought what you can get is that the gas is coming through here through the pilot burner the pilot is established and lit but you're not getting no main burner so basically it's just stood with the pilot light going and no main burner when you get that situation that means the main gas valve solenoid has failed because that's not opening, not letting no gas appear to this. Or the other problem it could be, it could be the ignition PCB inside here could have failed. Right inside this compartment, you obviously got the auto air vent, the primary sensor. This is for the overheat stat, so that's a probe basically that goes onto the main heat exchanger. In this compartment, you can see there's no air pressure switch. So the air pressure switch is actually down inside here. You can see the fan, so that's a sensing tube, which goes down, down there, and it's inside this control panel, which we're gonna have a look inside. So to get this panel here, what you do is you simply move the screws on the top here and then this basically folds down. This is the air pressure switch I was saying before. And this is the ignition board. So like I said earlier, if the pipe light is established but you don't get the main burner, then this could be a, a problem as well because it's not allowing rectification to happen and then it's not sending power to the main solenoid on the gas valve. This is the main driver board that controls the pump and other things through this. And this is the potentiometer that's for the heating and that's your timer. So that's what's inside this bottom panel. So that's going to be it for me on this video of this tour of this water 280. So um, if you thought that was good, you can um, give us a like. And also, if you want to find out more about repairing boilers to be a master in boiler repair, you can click on the link below and you can subscribe to that. So I urge you to do that. If you're a new guy, want to improve your skills, subscribe to my Master in Boiler Repair program. So that's it from me and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.